Hello, welcome back to the JavaScript web optimization course. So today we're gonna talk about page object and page component patterns. Let's take a quick look at the course content and jumping right into it. So what is page component pattern? Page component pattern is basically a pattern which allows us to break down the pages into smaller reusable components. So let me explain. So here, let's say we have this page. So this is the home page of our web store. And here we have some components. So this is a component for navigation. This is a component for, I don't know, company description or some header. This is a component for a product then this is a component for the footer like this whole thing is a footer and inside of the footer we have smaller components like uh, contact us then help then general then some company information right and then we have uh, footer all rights deserved so these are just different components of the page and why do we need do we need that let's take a look at the code so here let's say let's open this one top navigation spec and let's notice that we have really similar code written all over our tests so every time we want to navigate somewhere so we want to click on the navigation on one of these one two three four every time we want to click on one of these we execute the same code like here one two three four five yep so five occurrences for basically the same code the only difference is the uh, like name of the link our story contact products so let me remind you again. So we are breaking down pages into small reusable components. So let's start with the following. Let's try to reuse this navigation to our story. Navigation to our story. Const navigate navigate to our story. Yep, so this is a function for navigating to our story. Then navigate to contact. Yep, works for us. And then navigate to products. I'll just make it this way. All right, so here are the functions for clicking on one of these buttons or links. Okay, and how do we replace this in the tests? Like we can just manually go and replace each of these. One, then navigate to our story, then to contact, navigate to contact, then navigate to, okay, so here it navigates to the products, but for, first we want to navigate to our story, okay. Navigate to products, but here we had navigate to our story. All right, and the last one, navigate to contact. Navigate to contact. All right, so what we did, we just reused the code for navigating in the header. Okay, so this is the first step. Now we can notice that for each of these, we have like repetitive code. So each of these functions has the same code. The only difference is the name of the link. So let's reuse it even more. Const navigate to okay link and now yep this is what we need so we are creating a function uh, where we are passing the link and then 
we just pass this link here into the name. So here actually we can do it with TypeScript this way. Our story, our story, oops, our story or contact or products. All right. And now I will remove these three functions. Okay, so now I have to reuse it here. Navigate to our story. Then here, navigate to contact. Navigate to our story. Navigate to, come on, products. And here again, navigate to contact. Okay, so we just reused the code even more. So we created a function which navigates to the specific page based on the link name. Okay, that should work for us for now. Then what else do we have here? We also have this for button. This button actually navigates back to the home page. So if we are on our story page, this button navigates back. So this is the fourth button of this new component that we are about to create. All right, so, and this is this four button. Okay, let's do it this way. Click on logo, okay. Click on logo and this is probably what we need. Navigation, link name for navigation. Get by roll? No, actually it did the drone way, but let's quickly replace it. Click on logo. Okay, here we want to click on logo. And that's it. That's it. All right, so these are two functions that we used for these tests to reuse the code. And now we want to wrap these functions into a class. So let's call class class top navigation. Yep. Great. We don't need this one. And we just need these two methods of the class. So we're moving these two functions into top navigation class. Okay. And now in constructor we have to assign the page this page equals page okay and here we have to use like the the property of this class with the, this we can access the property of this class with this okay so it works like this basically our tests uh, say that they're broken now because we moved the functions uh, into the top navigation class we can actually call it top navigation component. Yep. And now we need to define this in each of our tests. So const top navigation top navigation equals new top navigation and page. And now we have to reuse it this way. Navigate to and the same way for each test one two three and of course yeah let's actually reuse uh, control f control f navigate to and let's replace it with here let's replace it with top tap navigation navigate to yep and replacing all of these replace all with the replace all button boom done and click on logo i forgot about click on logo top navigation dot click on logo all right so that should work so what we did oh come on yep it should work this way top navigation okay here removing this one extra 
Yep, so this should work. So what we did, we created a class for top navigation component. So this is already the page page component pattern, which we talked about. So we create a top navigation component for this component. And inside we have methods to navigate to each of these links and also for the logo because logo is like uh, separate uh, separate uh, button uh, from these three all right and these are two methods that we are using and then we create an instance of top navigation component in each test and we use it this way navigation dot navigate to our story navigation dot navigate to contact and the same for navigation dot click on logo so this is how it works with the classes in javascript for reusing the same code and now let's actually move this into let's create a folder here make dear components yep now we have it and now let's create a new file here let's call it top top navigation component ts and now let's move this code inside of that file now let's move it here so top navigation component and now it wants us to import the page, add import, yep, from Playwright. So we have this components folder and now let's import it here. Top navigation. You can start typing and it will suggest you the navigation import. Top navigation, come on. You can do it, I know, VS Code. Alright, should I do it manually? Okay, this time I'll do it manually. Top navigation. Yep, that should work. Okay, because it's not exported. Right, 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 right. Export top navigation component. Yep, now it works. And now the autocomplete also works. Top navigation component, yeah because I forgot to export it. Actually, we can export it a different way. Yeah, but uh, let, let's, uh, let's go with this way for now. All right, so remember again, we are using the same code here in these functions. And now let's try to run the test to make sure it actually works. So if you remember, we have to go with npx, Playwright, yeah, perfect test, and then specify the test that we want to run. So we are not using the UI mode to run it uh, just in console. Okay, for past, perfect. So that means it was able to reuse the stop navigation component. Okay, so to save you some time, I've just refactored the rest of the tests, and let me just show you how the other tests look like with the page components. So first, let me show you this one, contact form. So contact form test looks like this right now. So get heading and then we're expecting heading to be visible. Then get form title to be visible. Before that, we had this locator, like get by role, heading, all this stuff then same for the map so we moved the map inside of this component and just used it like this then fill contact form we are filling the contact form with these details with this we are passing this object to this function and then we're expecting yeah nothing changed here basically and let me show you this component so this is our let me remind you this is our contact form here, contact, 
Yep, so it looks like this. This is supposed to be the Google map. Then full mail, <clears throat> full name, address and message and the button. And here we have it. So get heading is get in touch. It's this one. Then get form title is this one. Send us a message. Get map is the map for the map and fill contact form is for these three inputs so i used one function for filling the contact form but we could do it like with um, three separate small functions instead of writing all this in one function yeah but th that's up to you so all right uh, let me show you the rest of the tests so let's see the product details product details page i think it's this one so let's check here product component so product component looks like this so uh, here we have the function for getting the title this is the title this one then we have the function for getting the price the price of the product so this one and then the image so this is the image and how it's used in the test products list spec so it's used in the test like this so this is product component get title and we are passing each of the titles to our product list page so this is product list page yeah so for each of these, we are just passing the uh, name of the product here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then the same for the price. So we are checking that the price is visible. So these prices are visible. All right. And then for the images, same thing. We are using this function from the product component so basically this product component is covering this component this whole component so if we would like to check the colors we would add here one more function to check the colors or if you wanted to check like the description here again one more function here with the locator to check the description to get the description and check it Okay, and the rest, uh, what else? Our story page, same thing. So I'm gonna push this code to GitHub, so feel free to navigate to my repository and check it. So our product looks like this, then contact us reviewed, and the most interesting one is create order spec. So inside of create order spec, now we have two components. One component is the cart, the cart is actually this component this thing and then we have the payment details component and payment details component is this form is actually this form and this form so i've used like one payment details component but we could have split this one into uh, let's say billing details component and then we would have also payment details company but i decided to put it into one component for now okay let's check what's inside cart component so we have art add to cart function then change cart options function it's um, yeah it's not perfect but for now the this should be enough and checkout. Checkout is just clicking on the button. And then we use it in the test like this. So cart, add to cart, change cart options, and checkout. One, two, three. Then we are using this payment details component for this thing. And in payment details, we again have fill out form, fill out zip code, apartment, city, then submit the form, then fill card card details this is something that we have here in this form after we submit this one 
so fill card details then place order place order is another button which appears here on the bottom and then assert success screen so i put all the assertions for the success screen here all the expects and let's see how the test looks like so now test is only like what um, 15 25 25 lines long right and before our test was where is it google chrome yeah and previously it looked like this so it started here and then all the way down yeah so it was a really huge test but now we moved uh, all the functions um, into the page components and now it's way much smaller okay so what else can i show you about these page components yeah i just want to say that these page components are not perfect so they are kind of hard-coded so i would change many things here and i will but not this time for now this is fine so we are refactoring things step by step we are not trying to make the code perfect in the first place so and it's impossible to predict like uh, what we're gonna add in the future but for now this is fine like it's okay it's okay to have something like uh, like i showed you here some what is this some hard-coded values here right it's fine to have um, like similar methods here it's fine to it's fine to place um, like everything into one component instead of splitting this into two components as i said before like for billion details and then for card details so in the future maybe i'll split this component into a few smaller components yeah but for the time being we are good we are slowly refactoring our code all right and now let's switch to the page object pattern <laughs> so page object pattern basically represents pages as objects in test automation code so remember this one was about page component like small components on the page and this one is about the whole page let's take a look so here's our website and the page is this one is the home page or product details page and it contains everything it contains the navigation it contains the headers it contains the product details it contains the footer and this is one page this is one page so next page is our story our story also contains the navigation the header the company info and then the footer and for contact similar navigation header contact uh, component and this is the page so what it looks for us uh, what it means for us like in the code in the code let's see this contact form for example so contact form has these elements okay so we are checking all this okay let's write an example page object here class page object oh sorry contact as page Yep, something like this so this is the page we want to create and on the page we have the heading we have the all right the map we have the map uh, like inside of the component so here we all only want to have the heading on this page then we want to navigate to this page async i will call it uh, open open and here how we will navigate to this page so one two and what else and also we want to reuse this 
contact us component inside of here. So this, no, I'll do it like this. Uh, contact us. Contact us component equals new contact us component and then this page. Okay, this should work. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, and let's navigate to the contact us component. And here I want to remove the heading because heading actually is not related to the component. Like this heading is not related to this component. So we want to have this contact us component. We want it to contain only these things here. Okay, so I'm removing the heading here. And yeah, where were we? So this is the page object and this page object contains contact us component and it also contains the heading. We can also add like uh, the footer. We don't need it now, but yeah, just to show you the example, get footer. Yeah, it may be something like this, get the footer. So this is the page. And now let's quickly refactor this test to use the page object uh, together with page component contact us page yep we're using here and here i would do it this way contact us page something like this contact us page contact us component and then get heading what is complain get heading doesn't exist on contact us component oh right so here we just want to do it this way, get heading and heading shouldn't be async. Okay, uh, it shouldn't be async and this one also. And here let's reuse it like this, contact us page, then contact us component and get form title like this, then number three and number four one two so here i want contact us page contact us page contact us component get map perfect and the last one and the last one oops contact us page contact us component fill contact form okay so what happened what happened now let's move this one inside of another folder make dear pages and inside of pages pages we want to create this contact us page Yes. Okay, and here we want to export it. Then we want to import the contact us component for sure. Then we want to import the page. And yeah, that's it. So contact us page. And then we want to import contact us page inside of the test. Add import. Perfect. And now we're not using this one. Yeah, th so that's it. And also I forgot to replace this one. So let me do it here. So contact us page, contact us page and open. Yep. So we are hiding all the logic, all the details inside of this page. And this page contains contact us component. Okay, I've just refactored the most complicated test, the create order spec. 
and let me show you how it looks like now so now we have the payment page this is page object let's see what's inside and inside of payment page we have three components so first component is payment details component so this is this one let me show you so this is the card so this is basically the billing info and this is payment details component maybe i should just change the order to make more sense yeah so this is billing details then payment details after the billing details and then successful payment this is the screen which appears after we complete the payment and it says something like thank you for your order like um, success screen okay so on this page on this one we have three uh, kind of we are using three components one two and then success so it contains all these three and how we use it in the test in the test we again we uh, kind of uh, initialize an instance of this payment page class so and with this object we just go payment page then dot billing details this one and then fill out form and fill out form is inside of billing details so it's here it's in billing details but this thing oh, okay i lost it but this thing contains billing details and billing details contains fill out form and the same goes for so here billing details billing details payment details payment page payment details it's this one payment details and this is the component and inside of payment details we have these methods okay actually we should remove this one for the success screen because i created a separate separate component for the success screen just to assert that everything appears ex as expected okay uh, and the same for success payment assert success screen um, let me let me explain it to you this way so we have the page and we have three elements billing payment details and then after we submit we have the success success component success billing payment and these are the components these are the components and we created a class called how's it called payment payment page and payment page contains all these three one two and three and obviously these three components they contain the methods uh, like fill form or something like that or assert success and this is how it works and here's some method i don't know fill address so this page this page contains three components and this thing is called in programming this thing is called composition so we are kind of composing the page with other components so we are initializing these components inside of the page and actually we can like if we would have other pages we could reuse it the same way so this is called composition let's go again uh, to the components so components are kind of encapsulating the logic of some specific element or elements on the page and the pages the page objects they may contain the components 
together with some other things na like navigation to that page, checking the heading, checking the footer, so some common actions we can, which you can do on the page, like I don't know, maybe you, you want to do the refresh, right? So this is something that you do with the page, not with the component, okay? So there is a slight difference, like, sure, sometimes you, you will confuse and put the methods uh, inside of the page object instead of the page component, and that's fine. Sometimes you will put the methods inside of the components instead of the page objects and this is also fine so i did it here a few times and <laughs> like <laughs> who cares at the end of the day who cares but we will still improve the structure but for now for now it's okay so and now let's talk about the pros of using page objects so first thing you might have noticed that we reused some code so we wrote some methods inside of page components and we reused that code in the tests so for some locators if something changes we can just go to the page object and change some locator uh, then for readability remember the test that we have that we had for create order so this huge test right now it looks much more neater where is it yep here so we see that this is cart opening cart changing cart options check out uh, do fill in the billing details then fill in the payment details then checking the successful payment component all right so this is for readability this looks much better at least for me then maintainability this relates to the changes that we might have with the locators. So if some locators change, then we just have to go to the page component and change the locators here. So in this example, where we had it, yeah, like here. So we wouldn't have to change some get motivation paragraph one, two, three times. In this case, we would just go here. Oh, oops, what happened? We would just go here and change this one locator for all the tests. For all the tests. All right, and let's now quickly look at the cons of the page objects and page components. So first is complexity. So the complexity of the tests increased. Now we used this thing called, where is it, composition. So we are composing the classes, the pages. So we used composition, we used like um, the, we are accessing the elements of the classes. We are initializing the classes here at the beginning of each test so the complexity increased like now we have some kind of now we have more files more folders more kind of dependencies between files and the classes so complexity is increased then time consuming so it took me a couple of hours to refactor all this stuff into page components and page objects so this also takes time and then maintainability. So here I said that maintainability is improved because we can go to the page component and change some locator and it will be changed for all the tests. But sometimes actually it's a downside of uh, using page objects or page components because sometimes if something significantly changes on the web, on the UI, then we have to go and refactor our page objects we have to refactor our page components and maybe even the tests just because we added this additional complexity so yeah but 
yeah, it's a nice pattern. I'm not saying that um, you should always use it, but it's a nice, at least it's a nice thing to know. And actually, if, if you want to feel like you're a real engineer, then you want to do this composition stuff like, okay, I'm creating page, page object here, then I'm doing some, uh, I'm using pattern, uh, what is it, page component, and I'm using some composition inside of my test. So this is like real test automation framework. I'm cool engineer here, but yeah, who, who cares? Who cares? Um, so I, I find this test also kind of readable, even with the comments. So it's more like a personal preference. I don't know. So I, I'm, I don't know which one is better, writing it with page object to increase the complexity of the test, but to make it look this beautiful or just go this way, keep it simple, stupid and just write everything inside of the test. And if I need it, just I will use the find and replace inside of my um, code editor. And I will <laughs> replace all the locators I need in the project or whatever. All right. Now let me show you the React.js components, how they look in the production code. So this is kind of similar to the page component pattern that we used in automation, but this is a bit different because this is the real code of uh, like UI, real UI code. Let me show. So here we have the components. Here we have the components folder and inside of components, we have components, articles, challenge, some common components, then drawer, heart, inputs, navigation, pickers, etc. Let me show you something, I know. Let me show you the common components. So common components are activity component for loading, just the spinner. Then avatar is a common component which is reused in many places. Then offline notice, if you don't have internet, then it will show you this offline notice. Spinning avatar, refresh control, yep. All right, so, and here how it looks in the code. So this is just some activity indicator. So this is just a spinner, spinner, which is circling when something is loading. Then the avatar, avatar is just an image here, image inside of view container. Then offline notice, offline notice. Yeah, it's just some text. And here we have some logic for this offline notice. Then what else? Let's check the let's say this heart component so heart component contains of two components of in icon sorry and text icon and text then what do we have nav bar navigation bar okay so this is the navigation bar so something similar to what we have here like the navigation bar and let's check how it looks like in the code so this is left button then menu button then left text blah 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 okay and here's this component so on the left side we are showing these things like some buttons here then in the middle we are showing the text text and maybe logo some image here and on the right side we are showing some button and maybe some notification or some text so actually this is for mobile app so this is like uh, the navigation bar for mobile app so nothing nothing complex and i just wanted to show you that um in the, in code not not in auto tests, uh, this uh, page component pattern is also widely used. So here I have the components and here I have containers and containers are more like the pages. So these were page components and these are more like page objects. So these are the pages and let me show you some page. I don't know this challenge page, challenge page. 
what do we have here yeah so in challenge page challenge page uses this component challenge progress then it uses challenge question and action button it looks something like like this so this is the challenge 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 page and on the challenge page we have challenge progress this is just a progress bar here how many questions you've answered then we have challenge question so actually the question here and then we have the action button action button like go next answer something like that so one two three three components on the challenge page one two three and the side of these components we have like more logic so here i have the um, question question it looks something like this the question and then i have the challenge answer challenge answer components they are here answers like the options for the answers one two three four so you see we're kind of um con like each component may contain smaller components so this is the page then inside of this page i have one two three components and inside of this challenge component i also have the question and the answers so this thing is not unique to test automation i mean the page object and page component stuff all right so that's it for today covered page object and page component i'm gonna refactor the rest of the tests and make the page objects and page components look much better than now so feel free to go to my github find the, this repository and check the code yourself also you can always do it this way just navigate to this repository and go to commits here here find commits and here you can check like um, each commit separately which files i'm pushing one by one okay yeah like this all right i think that's it for today uh, read some articles on these parents um, and yeah good luck rewriting your tests uh, using these parents yeah just i don't know just try to rewrite at least one test one simple test using these parents just first go with the page component then um, create page object together with page component then use the composition again reminding you that this this is called composition so we are reusing other other classes inside of our main class all right Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one, and as always, see you in the next one, bye.